Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to learn about biotic interactions. So biotic interaction is the interaction between living organism and their effect on one another. Consider yourself. Are you interacting with others only in one way? I'm sure certainly not. With someone you might be in friendship. With others it's possible that you might be in competition. And with few it's possible that you might be in very close bond. In in biotic interaction we consider how living organism influence one another. So biotic interactions are of following main types. First mutualism, second commensalism, third competition, fourth predation, fifth parasitism, sixth amensalism. Let's try to understand this. Say species A is interacting with another species B. Now with this interaction if the result is that a species A is getting benefited on the other hand species B is also benefited. So if both the species are benefited then the interaction is known as mutualism. Now consider another interaction in which a species A is unaffected due to the interaction and same is the case with a species B. So if in any interaction both the species are unaffected then the interaction is known as neutralism. If species A gets harmed same way species B is also harmed then the interaction is generally competition. Now another interaction in which species A is unaffected but species B is benefited then interaction will be called as commensalism. Another form of interaction is when a species A is harmed on the other hand species B is benefited. This kind of interaction is known as parasitism. On the other hand if a species A is harmed and species B remains unaffected then the type of interaction will be called as amensalism. So there are following main types of interaction mutualism, neutralism, competition, commensalism, parasitism and amensalism. Now out of these if one species at least is benefited then interaction is also known as symbiosis or symbiotic. Let's try to understand mutualism. Mutualism is an interaction in which both species are benefited. So species 1 as well as species 2 gets positive outcome due to this interaction. So mutualism is an interaction in, in which both the species are benefited. For example plant pollinator relationship. So in plant pollinator relationship plants provide nectar or food to the pollinators like butterfly. In return butterfly help in spreading the pollens of plant to another plant that means they help in cross fertilization. So species 1 is at benefit same way another species that is butterfly is benefited by this interaction. Therefore, this plant pollinator interaction is mutualism. Let's take another example of lichen. Lichen is an association between fungus and algae. So fungus which generally lack chlorophyll is found on the outer layer of lichen and this fungal layer help in providing protection to algae which is generally inside. Algal cells help in photosynthesis and provide food to fungus. So this type of interaction is again beneficial for both the species and therefore we can consider it under mutualism. Let's study commensalism. Let's take this picture. This is a picture which depict cow and dung beetle. So dung beetle is able to derive its nutrition from dung. On the other hand cow remains unaffected. So species 1 that means dung beetle is getting positive benefit in terms of nutrition. On the other hand species 2 that is cow is unaffected. So this kind of relationship is commensalism. So commensalism is a biotic interaction in which one species gets benefit and other is unaffected. Example dung beetle and cow. Competition. So competition generally take place between two species for natural resources like limited water, nutrient, territory, food etc. Now in competition we generally observe that both the species are at harm. So species 1 as well as 2 gets harmed in competition. 
So competition is a biotic interaction in which both the species are harmed with interaction. Let's take this example. So the lizard green enol is found in Cuba and brown enol has its origin from South America. Now if we consider competition then the rule of competition suggests that competitive exclusion principle will always be followed. That means two species competing for same resource cannot coexist at constant population value. This means either one of the species will become extinct due to competition or in other competition we might find evolution of resource partitioning between two species. Resource partitioning means that as a result of competition, the limited resource might be appropriately shared between the two species. So green enol and brown enol, when they were introduced in a place together, they, then they eventually occupied different ecological niche. It was observed that green enol occupied the upper branches of the plant. On the other hand, brown enol occupied lower branches of the plant. So in this way resource partitioning was observed in the case of competition between green enol and brown enol. Let's consider predation. So see this picture of cheetah capturing and eating prey that is deer. So predation is a relationship in which the predator gets benefited because predator is able to derive nutrition and food. On the other hand herbivore or the prey is totally dead. So in this situation we can say species 1 for example cheetah is benefited, species 2 which is prey is harmed. So predation is an interaction in which one species is killed and other is benefited. Next type of relationship is parasitism. So on the head we find head lice. These head lice suck blood from the head so they are getting benefited. On the other hand, host that means human in case of head lice, we find that humans are harmed. So species 1 that means lice are benefited and species 2 that is humans, they are at harm. So parasitism is an interaction in which one species is benefited and host is harmed. For example, head lice and human. Next relationship is amensalism. So amensalism for example is observed in case of tall trees. So tall trees they block sunlight and inhibit the growth of small plants nearby. So in this type of interaction we find that it is uh, negative, inter negative to the small plant but tall plant is not deriving any benefit after inhibiting the small plant. So in this relationship one species is harmed while another species for example tall tree remains unaffected. So amensalism is the interaction in which one species is harmed and the other one is unaffected. For example a tall tree shades a small plant retarding the growth of a small plant. On the other hand small plant has no effect on large tree. Neutralism is a relationship in which there is no net benefit or harm to either species. So in nature we find that species may occupy same space and use same resources but they might not be having any effect on each other. Now we have learned all these types of interaction. Now let's apply the concept and let's figure out what kind of relationship exists between the two species. For example let's take sea anemone and clownfish. So sea anemone is generally found on the coral reef. So sea anemones secrete mucus which is very helpful in providing shelter to clownfish. On the other hand, clownfish helps in scaring away the predators. So sea anemone is protected. Same way the fish is able to get protection through the mucus layer which is present in the tentacles of sea anemone. So since both are benefited, Therefore, we can say that relationship is mutualism or in this case, we can also say it is a kind of facultative mutualism. Facultative means that species can even survive when this association does not exist. So it's not obligatory to clownfish and sea anemone to stay together for survival, but definitely if they are together, they are benefited in much more better way. This relationship is also known as proto-cooperation. 
Let's take another example of mycorrhizal association between fungus and green plants. So fungus lack chlorophyll and derive food from the plant. In return, fungus provides water and nutrient to the plant. In this way, both plant and fungus are benefited. So this is plus plus relationship for both these organisms. We can consider it as mutualism or symbiosis. Let us take an example of rhizobium bacteria and pea plant. So rhizobium bacteria are present in the root nodule of legume plants like pea. Rhizobium bacteria have ability to take atmospheric nitrogen and convert it into soluble form. That means rhizobium bacteria help in fixing nitrogen and provide nitrogen to the plants. On the other hand, the plant undergo photosynthesis and provide nutrition in the form of organic acid to these bacteria. So again in this relationship both rhizobium bacteria and pea plant are benefited. So it is plus plus relationship for both the species and we can call it as mutualism or symbiosis. Another relationship is observed between spider web and plant. Can you guess what type of relationship it is? So spider create web on plants. So spider is definitely benefited in this case. But plant is not able to derive any benefit. In fact, the plant remain unaffected. So this is a kind of relationship we can mark plus for spider and zero for plant which is unaffected. So this relationship is similar to what we have studied in the case of cow and dung beetle. So when one species is unaffected and other is getting benefit, then the relationship is known as commensalism. Commensalism is a plus zero kind of relationship. Antibiotic penicillin derived from fungi penicillium kills certain bacteria. So penicillin which is derived from fungus is used to manufacture antibiotic. These antibiotics can rupture the wall of bacteria. So in, in this relationship bacteria is at harm and penicillin or penicillium is basically remaining unaffected. So it is a kind of relationship which can be considered under amensalism. So it is minus for that means negative for the bacteria but it is zero that means unaffected or neutral for the penicillium. So it's zero minus relationship. Another example is of bacteriophage. There are certain viruses which require host bacteria for their multiplication process. If they are able to get a host like bacteria then these viruses can replicate very easily. So in this relationship we find that bacteria is the host and virus is the parasite. So this relationship is parasitism and in parasitism virus is getting benefit therefore it is a plus relationship for virus but negative relationship for bacteria because bacteria is ultimately harmed. Let's try to understand few questions which have been asked in UPSC. So lichens which are capable of initiating ecological succession on bare rock are actually a symbiotic association of. So lichens they are primary pioneer species which colonize rock or any other bare area and thereby they help in the process of ecological succession and lichen is a association between algae and fungus where algae provide food and fungus provide nutrition and water to the algae. Second question what symbiotic relationship is exemplified by lichen? So in this relationship we know that lichen have mutualistic relationship between algae and fungus and algae provide food because algae have chlorophyll and fungus provide water nutrient shelter so the second option is correct so fungus provide shelter water mineral and algae provide food next question is allelopathy refers to so allelopathy is a phenomena in which toxic chemicals are released from plants and those toxic chemicals inhibit the growth of plants nearby. So correct option is inhibition of growth of one species by another by the production of toxin. And allelopathy comes under the relationship that is amensalism. We can say one species is uh, harmed that means minus and other species is neutral. 
नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन कॉम्पिटिशन फॉर लाइट न्यूट्रिएंट एंड स्पेस इज मोस्ट सिवियर बिटवीन सो इट इज मोस्ट सिवियर व्हेन स्पीशीज आर शेयरिंग द सेम निश फॉर एग्जांपल ग्रीन एंड ऑल एंड ब्राउन एंड ऑल देयर डाइट एंड एवरीथिंग यू नो हैबिटेट इज सेम सो वी कैन से दोज स्पीशीज व्हिच आर क्लोजली रिलेटेड एंड ग्रोइंग इन सेम एरिया एंड निश दे विल हैव मोर कंपटीशन a mutual beneficial association necessary for survival of both partners is definitely mutualism so in commensalism we know that one species is benefited other is neutral or unaffected for example cow and dung beetle case a mensalism is a relationship in which one organism is harmed and other remains unaffected for example inhibition of plant due to allelopathy or inhibition of uh, bacteria due to fungus penicillium so these are the cases of amensalism so the correct answer is mutualism because in mutualism both partners get benefit next question is which one is true first commensalism when none of the interacting population affect each other so this is not correct because commensalism is a relationship like cow and dung beetle relationship cow remains unaffected but dung beetle is able to gain benefit so this is not correct second point is symbiosis when symbiosis when the interaction is useful to both the population so this is correct symbiosis when neither population affect each other so in symbiosis both the population affect each other in positive way d option is commensalism commensalism when interaction is useful to both the population so in commensalism if we take the example of cow um, cow and dung beetle then cow is unaffected but dung beetle is benefited so in this reaction only one species is be getting benefit so d option is not correct second option is correct thanks for watching keep watching neha green planet for more information on environment